already looking at the ability to bring in parts into a Fusion 360 drawing. In Inventor, we had the Content Center, which had a variety of different fasteners and capabilities. Well, in Inventor, excuse me, in Fusion 360, we have got a vast variety of tools available to bring in different parts and components from around the world. And so I've created a, a little block here and uh, it's got some holes and these are 832 tapped holes that we put in. And we're gonna go ahead and find some cap screws to put in those particular holes. And so to get started, once you have your object created, you wanna go to the insert uh, tool. Now, there's different things that we can insert, and if we had things saved or, you know, we want to bring in a DXF, we can. But like the Content Center, we've got the catalog of McMaster Car available, along with inserting different manufacturer parts from around the world, which is pretty phenomenal in uh, what the opportunity list of parts are. But for our fastener, McMaster Car is the key. And so what we're going to do is we'll open up the McMaster Car catalog here. And as you can see, there is a lot of different capability and features. Fasteners, obviously, is the big component that we're looking at today since we're going to be dealing with screws and bolts. But even within the fastener environment, there is a long list of opportunities here. Um, you know, in terms of different objects that we can bring in. So we're going to bring in a screw, and it's a cap screw, and it's a socket head cap screw. And so we have the difference in a socket head or a round head, you know, and then you've got hex, flat, tap, shoulder, uh, set screws, carriage bolts, and, they, and basically it is the McMaster car catalog for you to choose from. And this makes it so much better than the content center because you've got so many more items available for your designs. So we're going to go ahead and choose a socket head cap screw. And even within the socket head cap screws, there's quite a few different options to choose from. And we're going to be choosing a standard socket head cap screw. And it's going to be an alloy steel because, again, there's different specifications, metal spec, um, stainless steel, left hand, right hand threads. So you can choose what you're uh, working with. And so we'll choose an alloy steel. And so within the alloy steel, we still have an additional option of having it either fully threaded or having it partially threaded with a shoulder available. And so you can, again, make a choice on what you're working with. We're going to go with a fully threaded black oxide. All right, so it's fully threaded. And then as we scroll down, we start to get into the number sizing. So this is a, a size 0, 80 threads per inch. Whoa. And again, here's the list. A number 164, a number 172, 56, and 64 for a number 2 size. And you're going, well, what sizes are these? Well, there are number sizes and then there are fractional sizes of diameters of screws. And so in your Arbor Press project, you're going to have number size screws and fractional size screws that you're going to have to work with. The one that we that I drilled a hole today is a number eight. And so a number eight has a 32 and a 36. Well, what's the difference? Well, a 32 is considered a coarse thread for a number eight screw. And so it's called a UNC, a Unified National Coarse Thread. There's less threads per inch. A number 36 is considered a fine thread, and that's a Unified National Fine is the designation. And so there's two different uh, specifications within the number or the uh, number of threads per inch and the designation being coarse and fine. So I chose coarse for the holes that I created. 
So when we choose a number 8, 32, we can scroll down and here we go. We have an 832. Now, the next question we have to deal with is what's the, the length of the screw? And that's what is being shown here. So we can have a number 832 from as small as a 330 seconds or as long as a 3 inch um, screw. Now I know for our, our designation here, I'm going to go about a 1 inch because I think I made the uh, block a little bit uh, smaller than an inch. And so we're going to choose a 1 inch screw. Now, the interesting thing is with the 1 inch screw, what we want to do is we don't want to necessarily add it to an order. We could, but we want to go into product details. So theoretically, we could order the screws directly from McMaster Car from Fusion 360. But we want to actually go into the product detail. In the product detail, we have the ability to see the drawing, but we also have the ability to save the file. And what we want to do is save a 3D step file. That's the most accurate file that we can use for our particular design. Yes, Fusion 360 will bring in a SOLIDWORKS file and an SAT file, but the STEP file seems to work much better in that Fusion 360 environment. So I'm going to choose Save. When you hit Save, it actually launches the tool to bring in the screw. So now here we have the screw, the socket head cap screw. And so it's, you know, and again, I just moved it 1.2 inches over. We can choose OK to capture the position. It makes, you know, in, in our case, we're going to have to insert it into the hole here. So we're going to have to do an assembly process. Um, we could rotate it. That would make it a little bit easier. So we could rotate it 90 degrees and choose OK. So once it's here, we'll have to use the assemble tool and make a joint and connect the joint. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and insert another one because I think we need to see that process again. So inside McMaster car, screws and bolts, socket head cap screw, alloy steel, fully threaded, choose the diameter. So from the list, choose your diameter, in this case 832, and then choose the length. I chose 1 inch. Once we have that, go to the product detail. Don't add it to an order, but go to the product detail. Scroll all the way down to the bottom in the product detail. After the drawing, you'll have the ability to choose a 3D step file and bring it in. When you hit the save button, it brings in the component automatically for you. You'll notice that it brings it in the same space that it brought it in before. And we can change that and do it A00. Alright, so it's actually inside the part here. Okay, and we could move it around and, oh, that's not 100% vertical either. So that's going to be a little bit of a problem as we play around with that on the assembly. So under, under the assembly, we're going to have to create a joint here. And so we'll continue. And so the idea is that there is a data point here at the bottom, one at the middle, and there's probably one at the top also here in terms of the coins. Nope, there's no coin at the top. So I've got two coin options to choose from. And I'm going to choose the coin at the bottom. And that coin at the bottom is going to be matched up with a coin at the hole. And what that is going to allow us to do, and right now it, it's asking for motion and it's revolute. Um, we're going to ask it, uh, let's see here, planar. Uh, it's going to be a rigid scenario. Now the problem is, is that position probably needs to get flipped. Yeah, see it was upside down, so I had to choose the flip button. Now the other component is, is that we're going to need to offset it in the x direction. 
Well, we know that the screw is one inch. So if we were to offset it, well, actually, it's going to be in the y direction. So if we were going to offset it as a negative one, that might be too far. Actually, it's 10. Here's a negative one in the y direction. Yikes. So we need to figure out what the direction is here that we need to move it down. So we need to go negative one in the offset z direction. There we go. So in the, off in the offset z, we have to go 1. And let's see what happened. Where is our... Let's try this again. Sometimes it doesn't work 100% the way we want it to go. We're going to assemble with the joint. Pick the base. Pick the hole. Flip it. Make it rigid. Back to position. And then we want this to go in the negative Z direction. To seat the head. And that's a that's one inch distance because that's the length of the cap screw. And if we look at it from the side, it actually will stick out the bottom just a little bit. Enough that if we we threaded it in, so we're all set. And so to do the other one, we'll have to do the same thing. So we can do an assemble joint, pick the end, pick the end, Flip it, offset Z at 1, and choose OK. So you can actually align them and get them all set up. And so that's the idea behind the capability of bringing in parts from McMaster Car. Let me show you the one other capability that we have to bring in parts from manufacturers. And so give me a second to get that set up. We're going to go to insert a manufacturer part and we'll bring it back into the screen. So the insert manufacturer part then opens up a special community within Fusion 360 in, in a web browser. And these are all alphabetical. Manufacturers from around the world, you're going to recognize both U.S. manufacturers and uh, manufacturers from uh, many other countries from around the world. And each one of these manufacturers has some catalog of parts that you can get access to through the Fusion 360 environment. Um, it does, you know, use tracking cookies and so forth. But the idea is that you can choose um, quite a few options. And so this happens to be Eaton, Automation Solutions, you know, visualization, PLC, safety technology, power supply units, uh, control relays. Inside the control relays, there's different, you know, again, the options. Easy 800. And so here's an Easy 800 control relay. We've got a three-dimensional, and then we can bring this part into Fusion 360. And so what you're able to do is specify and bring in actual product drones so that way you can accurately create your assembly based on the product components. Some of the new features inside Fusion, like in this case, we could actually wire this. If it was pneumatic, we could pipe it and so forth. So there's a lot of really neat features that are available within the Fusion environment for us to bring in products. Well, that's about it this particular situation with the McMaster car parts fantastic again remember not to purchase the part but at least not initially um, 
but bring in the design itself within your drawing. Have a great day. We'll be talking to you soon. Thank you.